Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Figured I'd do a quick update here on the canopy top. Making some great progress on it, so I'm pretty happy about it. And hopefully you'll see that in the video. Uh, the other thing I've found is, uh, as much as I like the oscillating tool, and I'll talk about it a little bit in the video, I really like the Dremel for cutting the fiberglass. Probably my new favorite tool. Works for me, but I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Wednesday, December 23rd and uh, decided to do a little more trimming on the canopy top and so i've done that i've shaved off pretty much as much as i dare down here i haven't fitted it yet but i've trimmed it down pretty good i think the other thing i did is uh i took this opportunity to actually cut out the windows i was a little concerned about cutting out the windows because unlike the rest of it, this is not nice straight lines. This has got some curves to it. And so I'll uh, explain how I did that and how that worked for me, but you know, it might work for you, it might not. Um, but anyway, it seemed to work really well. Also trimmed the back here, getting ready for to put it up against the, the back of the airplane so I can get the top on. And again, you know, here, did this one though. I think it came out pretty good. Still a little bit of touch up on it. But overall, it worked, uh, it worked pretty good. So what I did is, just looking at the tools again, this guy here, also Harbor Freight, the belt sander, I use that for the flat surfaces. It cuts it down really well. It makes it nice and smooth. Really like it. Of course, I have my oscillating tool to get into the rough little corners and just do some quick touch-up works. And also, I used it originally to cut some... Uh, some of the pieces out, which I'll actually give a little update on. Um, over here, you know, I have the the sander, this thing, which I use to get the flat surfaces. I also went out and picked out this uh, this sanding kit from uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, I came with the drum wheels, some of the sandpaper, and uh, you can see here I just attached it to the drill. And there's two sizes I used: this guy and this guy. And what I really did is in the corners, I first used my Dremel tool and cut it. By the way, what worked really well for me is when I was using, oh, sorry about the finger there. Um, when I was using this tool, I put it underneath like this. And I found that it made it pretty easy to cut, nice straight lines. If you do it from the top like that, um, I find it just jumps around a little bit, but if you do it from the bottom, it comes out really nice cutting blade. And by the way, I got those as a package as well into Harbor Freight, a package of three. It was pretty cheap. So I cut it, got it roughly the way I wanted to, even used it to cut out some rough cuts around the corners. Then what I did is I took this guy here and kind of did some rough smoothing of it and then this big guy really worked really well for radicing these corners in here getting it pretty good and flat also worked really well up along here and of course it worked uh, up along here uh, pretty pretty pleased with how it came out and then for the finishing touch i used the long sander to just kind of go over it and uh, flatten it out even more but I thought I'd share that. I'll catch this maybe tomorrow, see how things go. But uh, you now we're getting close. I continue to work on the avionics and also I uh, ordered from Aerosport the, um, the overhead console that's gonna go in here as well. Um, once that comes, I'll also document how I'm gonna put that in. But I figured I'd use it just an easy way to get some lights in the cabin without having to do some magic and also allows me to uh, use it to pump air even if it's not air conditioned I can put a fan on the back of it on the back end over here and have it just blow cabin air pressurized down through the vents and uh, I think that'll just make it a little bit nicer too when you're just kind of sitting there the plane's not moving and you'd like to get a little bit of airflow that'll help with that but anyway, there you go. Quick update. 
hope you enjoyed it and uh, have a great uh, holiday. Merry Christmas. And uh, we'll see what I post before the end of the year, New Year. Thanks. Bye. Um, I think this is pretty much close to my final fitting here. You can see it's pretty good. Slight gap right here, about the same on both sides. But uh, once I tighten that down and then once I bolt this down, I think it'll pull it down a little more. But uh, you know, it's pretty good. Especially back along here, you can see it's nice and snug. As a matter of fact, it's, uh, you know, it fits in there really good. Um, I've seen a lot of other ones. I think they most of them have a little bit of a gap up front. I mean, I could shave some more off, but uh, I don't know if it's worth it. But I think overall that's pretty good. And then through here, you can see that piece. And then if I come around the other side, same thing. You know, it's pretty good. And again, this one will pull down a little bit more. But you can see it's kind of the same gap here. And of course, when you just push down on it a little bit, it gets pretty snug. <clears throat> so, I think I'm ready to do the next steps here. Probably start thinking about putting the holes here to drill this, drill it out, bolt it down, and start putting the rivets in here, at least the Clecos in. And then, of course, putting the top on here and making sure that that's a good fit as well. It's pretty close, um, so it should be good. The one thing that uh, I will mention, when I did this cut, I did this first cut, I thought it wouldn't matter how long it is. Um, it worked out well, but it really does. Because when you put this skin on right here, it needs to have enough to click on, to, uh, to rivet onto this and be nice and snug. So just something to keep in mind. And uh, like I said in the other video, I really like how this came out, cleaned up a little bit more, but uh, you know, I think the tools work really well. I would also say um, I've changed my opinion on the oscillating tool. I know I mentioned that. I used it to do a lot of the initial cutting. But um, if you're doing this, you know, you, obviously your mileage may vary. But you might want to try out that uh, the Dremel tool. It worked so well. So well. I was really impressed. You get a lot of fine control on it. And so I'll probably try it in here and cut some of this out and see how well it works. But overall, uh, overall pretty, pretty pleased with how it came out. Um, starting, to, uh, starting to come together. So it's 26th again. And uh, now what I've been doing is putting this final skin on here to test the fit. And right along here, you'll see there's a bit of a gap. That's because this piece is pushing back on the uh, bolt here. So I need to trim it back a little bit. It's a little wider than a quarter inch. And then on top, same problem right around here. It's pushing the bulkhead back to the point where you can't get a Clico in here. So I need to trim that back a bit. So I need to do that. Inside over here, you'll see I've got some ink marks and on the top as well, just kind of identifying where this fit is tight. So I'll take it off and do that trim. And then likewise, on the other side, you'll see I'm trimming uh, the suction down here a little bit more just to get it to come down a little lower. Not gonna take too much off, but just enough so that it's not tight. And that way uh, I can make sure the gap out here is the way I want it. Uh, you have to be careful, but it should work out good. And again, you can see the same problem here on this side. You'll see it's a gap here. And of course, this needs to be pushed out. So that's what you see once it's pushed out. But uh, coming along nicely. So I'll do that, get that trimmed up, and then uh, I'm pretty much ready to start getting into drilling and some pleat going and just doing some prep for final assembly of it. I still won't attach it. I've got the overhead console coming, so I'll actually wait for that and glue that up. And then uh, once I get that done, 
probably going to paint the inside. I'll run some of the wiring, at least the wiring, all the wiring to the back as much as at least I can do. So that way I only have to deal with the front. And uh, this piece here is still removable, so I don't have to worry about it too much. Anyway, just another quick update. Cheers.